them. It was pretty easy to find out the people who, who uh, planted that bomb. This is a much different situation. Obviously, the, uh, the Taliban today saying Osama bin Laden doesn't have the resources to pull something major like this off. But if Osama bin Laden doesn't, who does? Someone certainly pulled it off today. And there had to have been amazing resources to pull this off. You're talking about a number of planes hijacked. There had to have been resources within the airports. There had to have... Hijacked and then flown to their targets. Remember, the pilots who were originally on board those aircrafts weren't the ones who flew them into the World Trade Center. Someone with sophistication and know-how how to pilot those aircrafts, had to fly them into the towers, and then, of course, also into the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. A suicide flyer, obviously. Um, we're joined also in the studio this morning, um, or this afternoon, rather, by Bill Heitman, who was uh, in one of the towers when this happened. And Bill, after, after hearing Jim Hoffer and seeing him running um, from the scene there as the, as the building collapsed, I was wondering, as you were trying to get out, you were in the darkened stairwell for an hour, did it ever cross your mind that the building might collapse? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, it, it, there was good spirit in the, in the uh, stairwell. We, I mean, I can honestly say we, people were, we, we were having some laughs, you know, we were just getting down, making the best of it. Some people had to, had to it was more urgent for them to get down, so we would all call out, move to the right, and they would proceed down. But there was no panic, and there was, there was generally, considering the circumstances, good spirit in the stairwell. Again, as you said earlier, it didn't seem to be as bad as the other explosion, the first explosion. Absolutely not. No. Absolutely not. So no clue um, and, and no panic as you were going down. No panic. There were, the, the, the thought of the building collapsing or, or being in any more danger never crossed my mind. And then, Bill, you okay. said it wasn't... Sorry? Uh, Jim, I'm sorry to interrupt because I want to just point out in this live picture here, um, what you're looking at is damage to an adjoining building. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the impact of this, um, not just to those twin tra towers, but also to adjoining buildings. Um, and it looks like there is still, obviously, smoke. And I think I saw some flames there as well, Jim. Yeah. Um, so clearly, there is um, still damage. Well, and they're all bunched up so closely together down there, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, there, there was bound to be collateral damage in the, in the neighboring business, yeah, uh, businesses. And Absolutely. Um, Bill, as, as you were going down that darkened stairwell and you say you had no thought that the building might collapse, was that because you had faith in the integrity of the building or simply because you did not know what was going on? I had on? no idea the magnitude of the crash above us. We didn't know that there were, two, we didn't know anything had happened over in two. We thought it was just us in one. And as, uh, as the further we got down, you figure you're, you're eight, you're 90 floors away from the worst of it. I figured when we came out and